and here we have him, Mr. David Reese Jones. How are you, mate? Yeah, very good. Guys. Good. Yeah. Welcome to the Jumper Punch. You are. You are the jumper puncher. Well, no, I didn't use a jumper puncher. I didn't punch them, mate. <laughs> I love it, I love yeah. it, I love it. David Reese Jones says, so today is number 26. Episode 26. Yep. And to me, you're the greatest 26 that ever played for Carlton, yeah? 106 games. You're one of four premiership players. Now, there was Jim's Par- Jim Parks, Jim Clark, and George Kowal. Kowal, right? I know that one, yeah. Yeah? Right, and yourself. Now, I'll tell you something about George Corral, Constable George Corral. Did you know that? No, no, no. no. All right. He was dismissed from the police for attempting to shoot a fellow officer. Is there something about the 26 that just makes you want to like? Right? Oh, well, he better shot him. He better off, <laughs> but attempting to shoot him. Then you've got to follow through. You've got to follow know. through, as you did, as you did, as you did. All right, so you're also one of only four players who played 100 games. So there was, uh, there was, uh, let me see, there was Brew, Ray Brew, Jim Parks, and Jim Clark, and yourself. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, so that's uh, another Parks yeah, using the right. jumper now, too. And I was so, going to yeah, say, Parks is another one who, yeah. who's got a bit of go about him, He's eh? got a bit of go about him, yeah. I, I did, quite like him, actually. And did I, you I got give him the jumper? Yeah, I presented the yeah. jumper to him. So, uh, yeah, it was good. He comes from a good family over yeah. there in, in Adelaide. And, um, yeah, it was good. It was, you know, I handy think... To, I, I like him. Yeah. I saw him with a little bit of gusto. He's got I a bit of go on him, yeah. I love him. So you played 182 games, yeah? All up, yeah. All up. And you played 106, 112 goals, 87 premiership play, and the most important thing, it's not too clear what I was saying. Yeah. I think I the think. most important thing is a premiership player, but yeah. Yeah. That's true, that's true. But maybe if you weren't a North Smith medalist, <laughs> maybe you wouldn't have been the premiership player. No, so here's your coffee. If I, if I wasn't a North Smith medalist, I'd just put that thing out and got reported yeah. 25 times. Well, so. Lou Richards once said, do you remember this? He could have been one of the best footballers around if he wasn't trying to be the middleweight <laughs> boxing champion of Australia. That's what Lou Richards said. Lou Richards also said once, he said, that kid, Reese Jones, he gets to the football ground. He takes his head off, puts it in the locker and puts a pumpkin on it. Goes <laughs> home, so. I love it. Hey, but we love the way yeah. you love the way you play. You also come and call them fame, I remember. Yeah. So of course you remember that. Now you played your first game for South Melbourne in 1980 and then in 82 you moved over to, to Sydney. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. part of the move up to Sydney. So, yeah, that, that was... Um, I think if people remember back in those days, the big south and south was pretty strong back then, and um, there was a division in the club really just down the middle, and um, it was probably half the players wanted to go to Sydney and half wanted to stay in Melbourne. Yeah. So it was, and you were happy? Uh, I was happy to go to Sydney. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought you know we didn't have much support down here, so it was you know it could have been a, a move that you know one team in in one big city such as Sydney, but uh, yeah, it. it it was tough in those early years. So it, was, it was tough. I tough. remember yeah. it was tough. What about Jeffrey Edelston? Yeah, well, he was after me. <laughs> I just left, so I, I joined Carlton at the end of '84, and I think Edelston got involved at the end of '85. So yeah. I missed him by yeah, 12 months yeah. or so. Oh, okay, yeah. he was a great he, Carlton. Man. Well, I was going to say he yeah. was him and Elliot are probably two of the biggest Carlton men there was. Uh, they yeah. loved the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and uh, Jeffrey, he grew up, you know, across the road basically from Carlton Footy Ground. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so a lifelong Carlton supporter yeah. who, who bought the Swans. Yeah, bought the Swans, and, and he bought a bit of a uh, bit of life with the with the Swanettes and, and oh, yeah, the pink hey, helicopters. And the everybody. pink helicopters, yeah, <laughs> and everything, yeah. So then in '85, you come over to Carlton. Yeah. yeah. Why? Well, at the end of 84, the, the AFL and VFL, as they were then, um, they sacked the Swans administration. And these were the blokes who, you know, we trusted up there. And and, um, and they put their own people in. And, and, and basically, I had a year of a contract to go. Yep. And uh, at the end of that, um, they, they had a meeting. They put their own people in. These guys flew up. And the first meeting, they said that no one had getting an increase in their contract for the next year and and, um, and I said well look I've got a contract and I'm going to abide by my end of it and you're going to abide by paying me what I'm yeah, due yeah. and they basically 
didn't come to terms with that. And I was lucky that my accountant put a clause in my contract, you know, sort of thinking okay. that if um, if something went wrong with the Swans thing, um, at least I have a clause in I can get out. So he put ah, a clause. that's why you could get out of the contract. Yeah, so yeah. He, put, he put a clause in there saying that if I, if I demanded me money at the end of the season and wasn't paid within 30 days, the contract basically become null and void. So did he have a, like an inkling that, that... He just thought that... You know, things we didn't have managers back then, but um, yeah, it was, it was it was a blessing for me because uh, yeah, we enacted. I said enacted straight away because I knew they had no money and the VFL had no money, so no, you know, I wasn't going to be able to get paid. Did you? Did you end up getting paid by the I did, yeah. Oh, no, about no, day paid. number 32, I think. Oh, all right, so you got paid off. Oh, <laughs> which was thing. another bonus. Yeah, yeah, so, no, that was good. So I got and um, coming to the Blues, how did that? How did that happen? Well, he had some connections. Um, with the Blues, he yeah. was a accountant for I think Wayne Johnson, Jimmy Buckley, and a few other blokes, and, uh, which would have been interesting accounting <laughs> exercise. But uh, I reckon there would have been some good times going on there. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, so he had some. And, and to be perfectly honest, I said to him, I said, look, you know, I don't really want to go to a club that's not playing finals. I haven't played finals footy, so and Carlton obviously had won 81, 82. Essendon had just won 83 and 84. And they won. Yeah, they won 83, 84, 84, yes. Yeah, 83, 84. 85. Hawthorne, was it? No, Hawthorne won 83, and then Essendon won 84, 85. Oh, okay. Anyway, regardless, yeah, it was yeah, always so Essendon, there. Essendon had won the premiership, yeah. and I'd sort of thought about it and thought, you know, Carlton had, you know, sort of dropped a bit, and they were always going to bounce back sort of thing back in those days. So, uh, and because of his contacts and that, we, we had a meeting with Ian Collins and Keith McKenzie, and that all went well in the morning, talking, you know, stuff about Carlton and that. And they sort of seemed to think they wanted to get me. And then um, I said to them, I said, well, look, at the, at the end of the day, I've got to talk to the coach. If the coach doesn't want me, you know, I'm, I'm wasting my time. So they had organised that day to get David Parkin to come and have a chat to me. So I basically, they had a contract there, I signed it within the day. So, nice. Yeah, I basically, um, yeah, decided then and there that I was... It was a good move. Great move, yeah. Oh, it's yeah, great move. Yeah, now, when you first came, because I remember, you know, I'm liking that. <laughs> it took a while for the fans to really warm to David Reed Jones coming to the Blues, man, because they, they knew the type of player you were over there. I loved it. Yeah. I wanted more. I wanted, I wanted, I wanted punishment <laughs> by everyone, you know. So I loved it, but it did take a little bit to warm to you. Yeah, look, I, I remember. And look, I got booed a lot of times while I was playing footy, and, um, and, and um, I remember... You know, it wasn't long into, into the season, and I'm getting booed, and I'm jumped up from the bottom of the pack, and I'm looking in the crowd, and there's Carlton supporters <laughs> behind me, so I'm thinking, God, what's going to go on here? But it, it was coming from a, you know, and, and the supposedly high-paid recruit, and um, and I was playing with triple premiership players, and, and, and obviously there was, um, you know, I was probably getting paid more than they were. Yeah. And, and that's just the way it, 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 it evolves in that. But um, yeah, so it was, and the pressure was on, to be honest. And and I reckon halfway through the year, I, I thought, geez, I'll, I'll make a blue here yeah. coming to Carlton because it, it's going to be too tough. And, and probably, you know, I, I remember I got dropped, and I'd never been dropped in the footy career before that. And um, That's in 86. In 85. In 85, yeah. I'd been dropped, and, and then I. Um, I was, I was actually, I was picked again for the seconds the following week. And I think it was Frank Marcazzani um, did a hamstring or something in training and they, they called me up to play. And it was a Friday night game against North Melbourne. And I'll, I'll never forget because I, I I would have tackled my own teammates to get the ball away. I thought, bugger it, it's, it's about me now. It's got to be about me because, I, you know, I'm, I'm sinking at the moment and I, you know, I knew I could play footy and I had a lot of confidence in my own ability and that. So, I went out there with just an attitude of um, I'll tackle my own teammates to get the ball. I don't yeah, give a stuff about night. anyone else. And, yeah, and I had a good game. It was a wet night, and I had a good game, and um, and that's when you start earning a bit of respect that's from the teammates, and that's what you you know that was a start, and, and, um, and then I played a few you know a few reasonable games after you that. So, thing, so after it wasn't a bad end of the season, and, and probably the best thing that happened was Kernan, Bradley, and Motley, and. Dorothy Shaw come next year and they all had the flash cars and that and they took the pressure straight <laughs> off me. They did too. All these two oh, premiership too. players they going on the big four. started looking at them then. <laughs> I remember that yeah. the big four come over and then all yeah. of a sudden teams. The teams pressure was right off me then I could concentrate. 100% man. Yeah. And then there was, so we played 86, 
got to the 86 finals. Yep. Was it the semi or preliminary? You had a really good game. Second semi, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah a really good game. game. Well, I actually played on the I played on the Rovers. Alan Jeans decided right. to put the Rovers on me and and, and um, they changed on the on the wing basically. So and I didn't play the wing most of my career, so I, I had a distinct advantage in how to play it and, and um, yeah it all worked out well. But then in eighty in the grand final then Yeah, they put Gary Ears on. And that's to be right. perfectly honest, I was rubbing my hands together yeah. at yeah. the start. And um, I think I got reported within about ten minutes of the Yeah you did. Of the grand final I, I hit him on the chin and um, and he didn't bat an eyelid so I thought that wasn't a very smart thing yeah. to do and then the coat, then the runner come out, and any more of that sort of rubbish. And so they kind around. of show their hand, kind of come on earlier on, and then come grand yeah. final, like no, they move. not really. I, I think you know, we, we, while we had a few experienced players, we had a lot of guys. We, we had guys, you know, Kernahan, Bradley, and those. They, they were in their oh, first year. In their first year, even though they played like yeah, a fair bit of football. In, you know, South Australian yeah. footy, but um, you know, there's no real comparison there. And, and they'd come across to the, you know, the big league and, yeah. and, and what do they play? 20 games of footy sort of thing. I mean, we had a very, very, and even 87 when we won it, we had a very inexperienced team as in games played. 100%. Um, in in, that, in, in, in that game. In BFL so, games yeah, played, yeah, 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 100%. So it was a, it was a pretty good effort. But, um, 87? Yeah, 86, 86, I think, you know, that were, were a bit like the deer in the headlights. Yeah, of course. And you did and, well um, to get and there. And 87, I think, you know, it was our redemption, really. Yeah, 100%. Uh, so yeah. you had a big year that year, 20 games, even though you, were, you got reported seven times. Yeah, only seven times. Yeah, yeah but you only got four yeah. weeks. Yeah, you still yeah, played yeah, 20 yeah. games. You had, a, you had a good year. Yeah. And then they did the move. Now, we've talk, everyone's talked about this, but they did the move grand final day. How did that come about? Like, what? Well, when did you know that you were going to play on Dermy? Uh, when I walked into the rooms um, after training on the Thursday night, we walked into the room and, and the team was up on the board. And what did you think? Were you ready for it or did you think, oh man? Well, you look at it and think, oh, well, that's my my job and hopefully I'm you know, going to be up to it. And you've you got a few days to prepare and, and, and get ready for it. So. Um, one, one thing I knew, I knew I was either going to be best on ground or worst on the ground. So was, <laughs> you were right there. There was going to be no in between. Right because, there. Yeah, Dermot, Dermot's a great player. Mate, he, he was, was a champion. But he, he was a key to me, you know, especially that year because Dunstall didn't play in the, yep. in the game. So he was the key forward that they were going to, going to be going to. And, and, and yeah, I no, tried the job to stop him. Can't stop him. But on that day, Told him a new asshole, right? You really, really got him that day. He was like 30, 35 degrees. Yeah, it was stinking hot, hot, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, stinking. He only kicked two points. Yep. So you really, really did a number on him. So that was a uh, yeah, and that that um that really that really brought you to the cunt fans, yeah. man. We love oh, the, yeah, that, that, right. <laughs> I can't remember. You know, the chance after Reese, Reese, Reese sort of stuff, but. But yeah, and, and we had a pretty young back line then. I mean, when you That's think right. about it, we had Mickey Kennedy, um, Stephen Silvani, uh, yep. uh, Ian Aitken was back there, That's right. Peter Dean, yeah, myself, Dean, yeah. and um, the other one, should know, Tommy Albert. And Tommy, Tommy Albert. So it was, it was a you know, reasonably young back yeah. line, you know, when you really thought it. And I was the most experienced yeah. you know, player. Um, yeah, so. I remember that game. You had a ripper game, man. You were, you were running off, you know what I mean. You were delivering that ball. You actually, you actually killed it that day. It was oh, yeah, and look, the norm six oh, showed. I think, it. I think I think everyone did their job. Of course, and that was you know it was all part of it. And, and to be perfectly honest, it's probably one of the one of the games I concentrated more than more than ever. You know, and, and yeah, so I remember having a headache at the end of the game, yeah. because of the heat and everything else, and, and just uh, I think it was about. 15 or 16 minutes into the last quarter and, and I yelled at one of our whites and I remember Dermot coming across and saying, well, don't worry about it, you've got you've it. You've got it, yeah. You've got it. And, and it was probably the time I looked up at the scoreboard and sort of thought, yeah, I suppose we're going to be hard to beat from here. But, um, but they were a great team. Too, Mate, so. they were champions. So yeah. That was the side of the eight. That was the but team that, of the 80s. In those conditions, they weren't going to kick four or five goals. No, no, no. It was absolutely yeah. Yeah, no. Everyone was So, you did that, played on, you got a knee injury in 91? Yep. Yeah, and that kind of set you back a bit, didn't it? Like yeah, after look, that, you I, never I really... had, 
had bad news before that, but I, I, I got a bad operation, got an infection through it, so um, yeah. that sort of made me miss the rest of that year. Uh, I tried to come back the next year, I actually got back off right again, and my knee was just not right, I knew there was something wrong with it, and, um, and they were giving me injections into my knee to, you know, to get me out each week, sort of, so we just played with painkillers and, 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 and those sort of things, but, you know, not great injections into your knee, but, um, but I, I, I got back playing and I knew there was something not right, and they went in, they thought I'd burst sides, and went in and had a look, and, and my patella tendon was hanging by a thread, so, yeah, they basically had to repair the patella tendon, and that put me out for the rest of that year, and then I, um, I was actually thinking of retiring at the end of 91, Yep. and, um, across a, a, a boxing coach called Ray Giles who, who did a bit of work with Collingwood and that and I, I actually worked out a lot with Mick McGuan over um, the pre-season and during the season as well and my fitness was probably the best it's ever been so I got back playing football in not in 92 and um, yeah I, I was quite happy with that but uh, at the you end played of, through the year yeah and, and I played you know the last game of the year and, and where was that over at West yeah, Coast and, okay, and, yeah. yeah and I we had to win that game to yep. to make finals and we got beaten I, I remember I, was, I, was, I started on the bench and um, I'm trying to think of the bloke's name the left footer blonde left footer Carl Langdon was running around kicking, kicked him, he probably kicked two or three goals on, yeah. on John Boritich in the first quarter and, and I'm sort of, get me on him, I mean, he's not going to kick goals on me, you know, I know how to find him, I know how to corral him and, and take his strength away and, and um, so about five minutes into the second quarter they put me on to Langdon, he hardly had a sniff after that but they won the game but it was, it was in that first quarter that I'd sort of in my head decided that that was going to be the last game of football. So, yeah, so you decided then, man, that's it. Yeah, I decided that, you know, I mean, I wasn't going to get any better. Um, my knees and my body were going to let me down. And, um, and the only reason I would have played another year was for the money, really. So, and that's not the right no, way. No, that's you not know, the reason. Not, no. not, not the right reason them. to be playing. I mean, the club wanted me to stay on, but um, no, I... Um, yeah, I think um, it was... On the radio stations friendly and, and uh, I retired on their show on the Monday morning. Oh, okay, so yeah. yeah. I actually that remember that. Yeah. So then you went on and you played and coached in Tassie? Yep. Yeah. You also coached Frankston? Yep. And you also did a reality TV show called The Club. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was, <laughs> I remember that. that. I remember was interesting that. too. Yeah, that was so, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Dull yeah. Moments, but, uh, but look, and, and, and Tassie, I was, I was lucky enough in in 95 to you know coach a premiership and, yep. and this was a team who never won no they hadn't won a tfl premiership and, yep. and they'd been up on top of the ladder and undefeated uh, you know you know in a few times and, and, and very hard to beat but just couldn't get over the line so and it was one of the things that really appealed to me when i went there and um the first year i went there we um we finished second, we got beaten by Clarence, who, who were really the money club and were able to have a lot of AFL, ex-AFL players yeah. playing for them. And um, I took them from second to eighth on the ladder the next year and um, the club wanted to get rid of me, so we got rid of uh, <laughs> we got rid of a few on the committee and um, <laughs> you we, stayed we, on. we won the flag the next year. I like so, it, I like yeah, it. See, that just shows me, you don't have to just get rid of the coach straight away, man. Like, this is what we do. Yeah. We do what you do. All right, now. Let's just talk about some of what's important here. Because me and you, I love that man. Like, I love like the bit about it. I love the way football stuff. You were reported now 25 times. 25, 22. But, but you were also the victim 17 times. So if I add that up, that's 42 times. That's right, yeah. Yeah, you have your own room there. I like. never, uh, never planned going out for dinner on a Monday night. <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah, you know, you didn't know what, what, what happened. Did the did your lawyer or whoever used to come with you? Did he used to ring you up and go, right, am I free on Monday or what's going on? <laughs> well, it's funny because I remember one day, you know, and we're going to the footy, and my wife at the time said to me, um, said to me, oh, we've got people coming over on Monday night. Can you please not get reported today? <laughs> And I said, do you really think I'm trying to get reported? And, and, and 
that's what it almost set me off anyway. Yeah, yeah. Know, you probably got reported yeah. that week. <laughs> All right, we'll talk about just a couple more players. Peter Smith, do you remember when you got... Peter the, Smith, yeah, a Melbourne runner. Yeah, yeah. That, what happened there? Why would, well, <laughs> why would the runner... <laughs> I um and, and it's it's funny this you know leads into a funny story because uh, look put it this way I'd, I'd been reported a couple of times for um, kicking Brent Croswell uh, hitting Brent yep. Croswell I think hitting Crackers Coon and maybe one other Melbourne player yep. and uh, and I was I was on the bottom of a pack and Crackers had been headlong a big strong bike and, and someone's um, tried to drag me out by the family jewels and. Um, and I don't know how you, you get strength when someone's yeah, fiddling down there, do, but right? um, but I all I did I, I knew I was on my feet sort of thing, and um, I'm breaking free of practice hold, and I'm on my feet, and the, here's the runner, Melbourne runner Peter Smith, and he looked as guilty as anyone, so I tried to give him one, and um, yeah, but, I love it. but the ironic thing is Peter Smith is Norm Smith's son. Yes. So yeah, that's right. about that, I whacked his kid and yeah, won his medal. Yeah, so, yeah that's uh, it. I love it. I love it. I whacked the kid down the middle. <laughs> hey, another like thug that hit you. Andrew <laughs> Demetrio. Demetrio, yeah, yeah. What a thug. What did he yeah, do? Yeah, and then he becomes like the bloody, <laughs> yeah. the, what is he, the CEO, whatever he become of the... He wasn't the bravest footballer too, so <laughs> I, all I think is I must have said something about his sexuality, his nationality yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah, it was open slather back. Open slather back in those days, so I would have, well, I would have seen something. Or yeah. something. That was good. I, I would have deserved it. Well, as the community, we thank you for that. All right. <laughs> and the last one we're going to talk about is diesel. Diesel, yeah. All right. So you, you play with him at the Swans? No, no, no. That's no, 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 only a Yeah. So he joined the Swans, and um, obviously he broke my jaw in two places, yeah. and. Um, yeah, so, you know, I mean, that's in your back of your mind every time you, you play in the Swans. And unfortunately, I you know, injuries and that, um, as we've mentioned before, after then, so I didn't have too many opportunities. And um, and then he joined Carlton. And I thought, so you played a year together? Yeah, in 92. How yeah, was that? When, when, well, when you first walk in, like before that, you well, didn't All I'm talk. thinking is, how the bloody hell am I going to square up now? <laughs> 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 I'm going to break the car park or something. <laughs> what am I, how am I going to do this? <laughs> so you never really could square so, up with yeah, So anyway, yeah. And then you become mates. Yeah, well, you know, acquaintances. Acquaintances, yeah, you know, that's I mean, fair enough. <laughs> mate, you were just tough with each other, man, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, look, he's a great player, great yeah, footballer oh. and that, but, um, and, you know, we played the way it was, you know, what happened on the field stayed on the field, and, yeah. uh, you know, you're not going to square it up off the field, so nah, that's nah. They're all part and parcel of the, the, the way we played back Yeah, there. 100%, 100%. All right. Thank you very much. No we love yeah. that, man. The best 26 that ever played for Carlton, <laughs> man. Well, thank you no very worries. much. All right. Thanks for joining the Jumper Punch. No worries. 26 and episodes. Keep jumping, yeah. 26. Well thank you, right. my friend. Thank you. Thanks.